tricky spellings, final D, G, E, and G, E. In this video series, we're exploring some tricky spelling patterns that often confuse our learners. One such spelling pattern is the final spelling of J. Since English doesn't have any words that end in the letter J, the final J sound is generally spelled one of two ways, D-G-E or G-E. But how does a learner know which way to spell that final sound? Well, spellings in English aren't as random as one might think, so there are some generalizations that govern how this final sound is spelled. Final D-G-E is generally used after a single short vowel. Let me show you what that looks like with a few words. Each of these words ends with D-G-E. Notice that all of these words have a single short vowel in them. And when this happens, D-G-E is our final spelling. Final G-E is a little more complex because it can come after a consonant or as a part of a long CVCE spelling pattern. So in the words like bulge, lunge, fringe, and tinge, Final GE comes after the consonants. Final GE is also part of the long or silent E or sometimes called magic E spelling pattern in words like page, huge, cage, and age. Now in these words, the final E serves double duty. It, it softens the G, the final G sound to make it a soft J as well as it helps the vowel make its long vowel sound. In these cases, the long vowel sound is pretty much a dead giveaway that GE will be our final spelling. Now, in order for learners to know which spelling pattern to write at the end, it helps if we break the process down by teaching them to ask themselves two questions. First, what is the vowel sound? We're specifically listening for short or long sounds. Second, is there a consonant after the vowel? Let's finish some words together. All right, our first word is cage. First, we're going to listen for the vowel sound. K -a -g. I can hear it's a long A. Now, I'm pretty certain it's going to be spelled with a GE, but I do want to check to see if there is a consonant after the vowel. And Nope, I do not see one, so there is no consonant. So that means cage will be spelled with just the G-E. All right, let's try it with the word lunge. I hear that J sound at the end. So first I'm going to listen for the vowel sound. L-unge, uh, uh. It's that short U sound. Now, usually D-G-E comes at the end of short vowel words, but I still need to ask myself that second question. Do I have a consonant after the vowel? And yes, I do. I have an N. So that means I don't need the D-G-E. I just need the G-E to finish spelling the word lunge. All right, let's try one more with the word badge. First, again, I'm going to listen for the vowel sound. B, A, J, A, A. I hear that it's a short A sound. And again, I think it might be D, G, E, but let's check for that consonant after the vowel. Do we have one? No, we don't. So that means badge is going to be spelled with D, G, E at the end. Now, knowing and, and teaching the spelling generalization is great, but it's also important to know when you should teach it to your learners. When are they developmentally ready for it? Well, final DGE and the consonant plus GE can be taught as you work on short vowel words. Now, these are longer short vowel words. We're not just talking CVC simple words like cat or rat or dog. We're talking about words that would have blends and diagraphs in them. So words that are short vowel words that are longer. 
Now, the other use of GE, of the final GE, can be taught when your learners are ready for the CVC E words or silent E words, magic E words, whatever it is you call them. Now, I will say you also want to integrate soft G into your teaching because that silent E at the end of these words is also softening the G so it doesn't make its hard G sound, it makes the soft J sound. Now, and I also will say that words with R control patterns plus the GE at the end, they fit in the spelling generalization, but I would recommend waiting until your learners are ready to learn that R control pattern before you introduce these words to them. If you would like some low prep resources for teaching these tricky ending sounds, as well as the soft C or G, here are two helpful resources that you can use, and I've put the links to my shop in the description for you. Thank you for joining me at This Reading Mama, where you'll find hands-on learning for home or school.